inside my DNA. Kenny! I got loyalty, got loyalty inside my DNA. I got loyalty, got war and peace inside my DNA. I got loyalty, got war and peace inside my DNA. Shinra Tensei. I was born in this world. Hey guys, if you haven't already, give the video a like, subscribe to my channel. This is a what if series and I'll be doing more down the road. Plus Ultra. Hey guys, and welcome back to What If Naruto Was the Reincarnation of Miyamoto Musashi Part 3, the final part to the Young Naruto series. If you guys want me to do a Shippuden verse, like a version of this, get this video to like 90, 95 likes. 95 likes, if you can do that, then I'll release like the Naruto Shippuden verse of this series. Anyway, I'm back. I'm sorry it took me so long, but I'm back making videos. So there you go. Anyway, I'm going to be putting out like uh, two more videos after this. I don't know which ones they're going to be. I'm just going to basically go through them. But just know that one, not the two, I know which one of them will be. Just know that Fairy Tale, Goku and Fairy Tale is going to come out. Anyway, so... Let's get back into where we left off, and there's some things that I gotta do a little reverse back. I gotta go back in like a little bit. So when I said oh, I didn't like mention Hinata versus Neji, or though like those fights and anything, pretty much just like skipped over that fight. So that fight would have not went as the same as it went in canon due to the fact that Hinata had more training. She's been training with Sasuke, uh, well a lot, like a lot, a lot. She's been training with Sasuke and Naruto. So not only would Hinata blitz Neji, I mean, she would body Neji so easily. Like, it wasn't even basically a challenge. And then she would look at her father and they would see that she get, has gotten a lot stronger. And Naruto would be smiling at this. That training that he put Sasuke and Hinata through, it has paid off. And it paid off a lot. Because Hinata, like, Hinata and Neji were going against each other. They were fighting it out. going Throwing so many attacks at each other. Hinata would pull out her 8 trigram 6. 64 palms and so would Neji. The battle would be on both equal sides with the two of them throwing blows at each other. And Hinata would do a palm rotation which would shock Neji. Neji always noticed that Hinata was never strong. She was never good at fighting everything. She was also below and like the Yugas, but he, he just said that she was weak. It was her destiny to be weak. And for him to be seeing this right now, Hinata is smiling at Neji. And she's then taunting Neji too. What's the matter? I thought I was always supposed to be weak. I thought I was always supposed to be this one girl who could never amount to your power. Give me a break. Is this all you have, Neji? And Neji would even have a vein in his head, and he was telling Hinata to do not get cocky. The battle is not won yet. As these two are just going all over the place, and they're moving at very high speeds, Neji is going full throttle on Hinata, and so is her, and so is she. She's going, using everything she can in her arsenal, throwing left hooks, right hooks, just going all over the place with Neji. And the both of them are using jutsus to the point where Hinata jumps back from Neji, kicking him away. And then she coats her arm into this chakra. Now she's trying to use a jutsu to what she was, like, what she did in Shippuden. And that's the twin lion fist. Now as she's creating it, she creates, like a, like a, say for example, not like a good, like a very, how do I put this? Not like a completed version, but an incomplete version. Something she's been training for but hasn't mastered yet, if that makes sense. So as she's using this incomplete version of the Twin Lion Fist, she's hitting Neji left and right, like all over. Like she's using her, like all her power and punching Neji across the like battlefield. And Neji is shocked that Hinata has grown this much. And the time that she got selected to Kakashi's team and the time that Naruto had to train her, you can just imagine how strong Sasuke is at this point. That both of them have some up to potential. And Neji even glances at Naruto one time. And Naruto even smiles at him say, and whispers something that he can't even hear. But Kakashi heard it all too well. Hinata is going to beat you and she's going to win. Well, she's going to beat you to a pulp and win this match. And... As Neji focused back on Hinata, he let that little waver of focus, that little waver of focus for him looking to that right, he looked right back at Hinata, and a huge punch came to his way, sending Neji crashing into the little, 
the little fingers, whatever those shits is, the little two, the jutsu hands, whatever those called, the, the hand statue, put it that way, the hand statue, he went crashing into that and Neji got knocked out. Blood, well, not that much, but the dude get, did get hit into that bitch really hard. And Hinata didn't really know the strength of her twin lion fist, so she almost put Neji on the verge of death in that battle. She didn't know how strong those were. Kakashi would like basically get on her about that saying she needs to train and control those more and basically Hinata did in her defense well when me and Naruto was training Naruto basically told me that this attack is meant to be deadly I get it you basically used it on him because you were annoyed by his whole destiny view and you were trying to show him that hard work can overcome any destiny you're right about that but next time, just don't use something that could kill your fellow Leaf Ninja. And Hinata would put her hand behind her head. She's not shy no more. She's not stuttering no more. She would just put her hand behind her head and just say, ah, I'm sorry. And then she, then Naruto, then Sasuke would smile at Hinata and then that's it. So that's the only thing I wanted to put in there. I mean, Sasuke's fight with Yoroi and all that other stuff. Everything would, all the rest of the battles would go pretty much normal. But Rock Lee would still lose though. Damn. Damn. Anyway, so now that I mentioned the whole one month training arc, let's get to the battles. Now, obviously the fight will go like this. So it's going to be Tintin versus, what's his name, Tamari. Sasuke versus Gara, same as that usual. Naruto versus Hinata. And then, I think that, uh, what's that one? And he, and what's the name? Eno versus Konkuro. Those are the battles I got listed out. If I'm missing any other battle, if I miss any other battle that happened in the tuning exams, the final tuning exams part, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, so as they're, like, as the battle's commencing, they do their whole speech and everything, this is where Naruto and Hinata walk onto the field. And Hinata, is, she's not scared. She's most likely smiling at this and saying, I'm going to give this everything I got. Now, Hinata is not wearing her usual getup, not like the jacket. She has on like a black long sleeve shirt and some black ninja ninja pants and everything. She has pretty much a tactical outfit on to, kept, to help her maneuver in battle. So the black, it's not like a black shirt, it's black, blue, and white. Like black, blue, and white to re basically to represent her Huger styles and stuff like that. So now as Hinata and Naruto are walking onto the field, these two would look at each other. And Naruto would tell Hinata that... I only use my... She would ask him, Naruto, why don't you have your swords? And Naruto would look at her and say, I only use my swords in the form of a battle. I only use my swords in the face of an enemy. You're not my enemy. My hands will be more than enough. Just because I'm not using my swords, Hinata, doesn't give you the right to hold back. I want you to come at me with everything you have. And now I said something that I do have to say. Kakashi did have help training Hinata too. I know that whole training art was basically him focusing on Sasuke. So in the comments, I would like one of y'all would say that Hinata should have went with the Hyugas to train more with her Byakugan. But Nara Sasuke, I mean Kakashi would have had more training with her, and he, he would have given Kakashi a few tips with Naruto understanding and battlefield performance and understanding of people's techniques and stuff. Basically, with his analytical mind, I don't doubt that he wouldn't get it that way. Being Miyamoto Musashi's reincarnation, as OP as that is. Anyway, so as Naruto and Hinata are on the field, Hinata basically does the twin lion fist. And in that whole month, like, she's still not complete, but you can show that she has enough form to basically create the heads of two lions. Just enough to basically represent two lions. When she was fighting Neji, it wasn't like she was creating the twin lion fist. It was just like... This bluish chakra was over her arms. That's all it is. That's the best way I can describe it. Because I'm basically putting this in stages. Now you got the chakra where she's over her arms. Then you got the way where it almost represents a lion. And in the final stage where it's complete, it represents a lion. I hope you guys like the way I did that. It, it, just, just something just to keep it going. Anyway, so as Hinata got, gets into that stand and she looks at Naruto with her Byakugan activated. Now Naruto's eyes glowed, and he puts his hand in the form of as he's drawing a sword, and this purplish aura radiates over Naruto, and then the both of them charge at each other. 
And in a flash of light, the two collision of fists created this huge gust of wind. And the both of them were getting this hand-to-hand combat battle, like teleporting all over the field. And as they teleporting, the ground beneath them would crack and shatter as the whole arena, the stadium, felt their fists crashing into each other. One punch, two punch, every punch was connecting, was sending out wind bursts. But it wasn't like all these, like, it wasn't breaking everything. They were just, these wind bursts was non-lethal. It was just the crowd was just roaring at them. And then this is where it gets serious. Naruto punched Hinata dead in the mouth. Hit her to the ground. And Hinata followed back with a kick to Naruto's mouth. And he would be spitting out blood. Naruto would be dazed from this kick. as he's losing balance. And Hinata rushes up to him. Hitting him with a left hook. A right hook. Hitting him in the stomach. Punching Naruto in the head. Elbowing him in the nose. Now Naruto catches her arm and then comes back with a headbutt, headbutting Hinata directly in the face. Now Naruto jumps up on the heel of his right leg and sends a high head kick to Hinata, dazing her and having her tumbling against the ground and crashing into a wall, even a crater. Now Naruto kick was so fast that it left smoke on his leg and then he lifts it back onto the ground now naruto doesn't hesitate he doesn't want to give hinata an opening he wants to bombard her with attacks all over the place this is getting excited and his blood is boiling now naruto rushes at hinata throwing one two three throwing all combos that he can from kicks to punches to elbows to right hands like all that he even slaps hinata directly on her back sending pain throughout her body now hinata is feeling all of this and she's screaming out in pain now naruto is not Letting up there. Naruto grabs Hinata by the leg, lifts up her, her up in the air, and slams her directly on the ground like a sword. Naruto's eyes is red at this moment, not like the Nine Tail Fox, but if you guys watch Baki, to my Baki fans out there, you would know what I'm talking about. His eyes are completely red. So think of this. You know how the Great Eight transformation? Think of a lighter shade of red and their eyes are glowing. Think of something like that. That's the best way I can ex- describe it, and that's the only explanation you're going to get out of me because I'm not describing it again. And I'm just going to basically say his eyes are going red. If, if I ever continue this in the, the Shippuden part. Anyway, so as he slams her on the ground, he not to cough up blood, but then she just tally- retaliates and use her 8 trigram 64 palms technique, hitting Naruto, cutting off every last one of his chakra points. She was fast possibly faster than what he could realize because he couldn't he didn't counter that fast enough he didn't expect her to use that just that fast off the ground like that and she would even tell him that when he she was slammed into the ground and smiled at naruto when she coughed the blood that hey naruto and he would say yeah you're in range now naruto would try to jump back but hinata was already there in his face and she would say one trigram he said two trigrams all the way up to 64 trigrams Two, three, thirty-two, all of that, all over Naruto, and then kick Naruto directly into a wall and rushed up and say sixty-four palms. Now he not Naruto would get hit by that, but then Naruto would look at Hinata and smile, and he basically dazed from this. But he said this battle is getting so intense. He grabs Hinata by the arm, and you can see veins in Naruto's hand as the aura over the whole arena start to illuminate, and Hinata sees Naruto as this big ass giant monster. She sees an image of the nine-tailed fox behind Naruto. Now, only she can see this right now. Nobody else can. But she's seeing something very scary that's standing behind Naruto. And Hinata has a sweat. Her body starts sweating immediately. Now, Hinata backs up from this. And she falls to the ground, but then she gets back up. She gets back up, and then she looks at Naruto and says, You don't scare me, Naruto. Whatever that is, I'm going to stand before you. And then she put, then her mind goes blank. And then Hinata opens her eyes and charges forward at Naruto. And the both of them get into a, yet another fist battle. But Naruto is getting faster. He's getting stronger. He's getting more sharper. He's dodging and evading some of Hinata's attacks. Hinata is using every arsenal, every part, every point attack that she can. But Naruto seems to be dodging, evading, jumping over every attack that she's using. Naruto is tapping in some of the Nine Tails Fox power. And the Nine Tails Fox is even getting excited watching this. This is the most fun he had sitting in the cave thus far. I mean, watching Naruto do all this in his childhood has been fun for him so far. Naruto would not hesitate to kill somebody in his wake, but he will protect his village with all his power. Now, as the both of them are fighting all over the place, Naruto stops and Hinata sees this reddish purple aura radiating over Naruto as his eyes 
And his eyes are like red, like red with a slit in them. Now, Naruto is looking at Hinata and she's breathing heavily. She's battle damaged. And Nar- she basically just says this. Kakashi taught me one thing in my training. Was that if I inactivate my endorphins, I can attack you with everything I have. Not worrying about one injury. So she activates her endorphins in her body and she rushes at Naruto, delivering a thunderous punch to his jaw. Now Naruto gets dazed from this and almost hit the ground, but he catches himself and he lifts back up for just to get punched right back to the ground by Hinata. And this was a ground shattering punch. Hinata was showing her strength. With the chakra she had in her body, she was enhancing her strength and her speed with her chakra. So she kept battling, hitting Naruto with these thunderous blows. And Naruto would retaliate by using some of the Nine Tails Chakra, coating his fist in it, and punching Hinata across the ring. Well, across the stadium area. She would hit the wall, and Naruto would be right there in a flash. And he would have a Rasengan in his hand. And this is where he would say, game over. He would, use, he would hit Hinata directly in the stomach with the Rasengan. And then, but he would, it wouldn't be like a full power Rasengan. It would disperse right after. Like, as soon as he hit her, he would disperse it and she would go spiraling towards, like, the ground and then basically be knocked out. Naruto would fall on one knee, breathing very heavily. Hinata pushed him enough in this battle and Naruto smiles at this. Maybe I can get a little bit stronger. I was too cocky. But that's exciting, though. Now, I'm not saying she pushed, she pushed him in the battle. She just never could overcome Naruto. She just pushed him to using more of his potential. Awaking more of that Miyamoto Musashi potential. Anyway, so now we continue with Sasuke versus Gara, And that would be very, like, brutal. That would be very brutal. The, the both of them going against each other, that would be so brutal to the fact that Sasuke, when he was battling Gara, he would not only would he get punches in, but he would get some hard and heavy punches in. I'm talking about, he would have made Gara bleed a lot earlier. From punching him in the nose, Gara's nose would have been bloody, and he would have felt blood coming from his mouth and nose. And that would have been just from two punches from Sasuke. And that's when he would get in that whole sand dome stuff. Now, this is the part which is very scary to the part. Because Sas- Naruto did put a lot of training into Sasuke. He didn't go that heavy on Hinata. Guilty as that. I mean, they, he did train them so hard. But he didn't go that heavy on her due to the fact that he's a girl. She's a girl. But he still... Put it like this. He still went heavy on her. Just like he went heavy on he- Eno. But... Not that hard, though. He still put them through vigorous training, but it's something that they can handle. But Sasuke, on the other hand, yeah, he trained the fuck out of Sasuke. He even told Sasuke, like, when he was training him, that if you don't want this sword to pierce through your back, you're going to have to hold yourself up for 12 hours. And Sasuke did. Then now imagine get, now that part. Now imagine Sasuke using his chakra and his strength, and Sasuke and Agar hitting that little ball, only for Sasuke just to punch it and shatter it apart. Now, Sasuke would look at Gara and say, you have no defense to hide from. Your sand can't catch me. So what will you do now? Gara... Sorry, my throat. Sasuke would kick Gara directly into a wall, shattering that gourd on his back. Basically having all the sand basically drip out of his back. Now, where will you get your sand from? There's no sand down here. I mean, basically you can use whatever was in that gourd of yours. Keep in mind, I'm thinking that he's getting the sand, but Gara can still use his sand. It just that I think that Gord was helping him use his sand powers. So basically, I just got retcon that Gara can basically pull out a sand through the ground and everything. So basically, that wouldn't matter. I think he had to train to get to that point. Yes, he did, but still though, the fact matters that he still use sand. It just that that triggered Gara when that thing broke on his back. I think that was something sentimental to Gara, so he would snap immediately, and then he would start to get mad as the sand would start to cover his body, and he would start to transform into his Shukaku version. Well, not many Shukaku. He would just have the arm and the eye, and then he would jump over the stadium. Now, this is where Tamari and Kakankuro would follow Gara, and this is where the whole attack on Konoha would begin. Now, Naruto would see this, and he would still say that. I ah so you were here, Orochimaru. You still managed to get in here. You still managed to basically sneak your way in here. I wish I would have been informed by this sooner. I should have said something, but I kept this all to myself because I wanted to cut you again. So this is where Naruto would say Sasuke and Hinata 
Go after that Gara guy. I bet you guys can handle him very easily. Now, I'm going to stay here because I want another swing at that Orochimaru dude. I have a huge suspicion that he's here. He has to be. So Naruto would go rushing off to find where Orochimaru is. And before the Sound 4 could even put up the barrier, he would jump right in there where the third Hokage is in a flash. And Naruto would unsheathe his sword and point it directly at Orochimaru. And this is what the third Hokage would say, Naruto, what are you doing? Get out of here. You are going to die. And Naruto would say, relax, old man. We need to be together on this. I heard that this snake freak has some regurgitating abilities, which seems to me I can endlessly cut him. Now, Orochimaru would have a huge sweat, a huge sweat that's coming down his head because this, this guy in front of him stopped him from putting the curse mark on Naruto. Even if Hinata was like a side quest that he could use to put a curse mark on, he stopped him from doing that. He basically single-handedly stopped Orochimaru from doing anything. So this child has enough power, enough chakra, speed, strength to battle against a Sani. Now Naruto would look at Orochimaru and the third Okage, he would say, Lord Third, let me battle against you just this one time. This was also a dream of mine, to stand on the battlefield near the Hokage. And that dream right now is going to be fulfilled. As Naruto sends out a slash against Orochimaru, cutting him directly across the chest. Blood will spew out Orochimaru and he would be like, he cut me from all the way over there. Orochimaru would jump back and then weave some hand signs and summon his, th his four coffins. He would try to summon all four of them, but the, whole, the third Hokage would keep the fourth one down. And we all know who that fourth one would have been. So it would be only the first, second, and it would, well, you already know, but it would only be the first and second Hokage. So he would summon those two. It would just be two. Now, Naruto being there would create a lot of edge. A, cre a lot of edge. And this is where he'd be slashing through Hashirama, slashing through Tobirama. And he would still be getting to Orochimaru, but he would be getting small cuts. Like, Orochimaru would be still getting cut by Naruto. And these would be some, like, deep cuts. Not little cuts, but deep cuts. And Orochimaru would be looking at Naruto and be saying, How is he getting through them? This guy is said to be the god of Shinobi. And he's said to be Tobirama. And this is where Naruto would basically say, wow, so you really are weak. That is so lame. You have to use some pawns just to fight your battles. Naruto would then pull out his second sword. And then he would have his other sword in his hand. Naruto would have this purplish reddish glow hue around him as Naruto puts his swords together. And Naruto says this one word. Well, not one word. He would say two heavenly swords as one. Orochimaru will feel the whole village shake. And Naruto says, this is one skill that I've been working on, that I've been trying to perfect. I will not let you harm this village, Orochimaru. I will come at you with the force of a volcano. And Orochimaru will see an exploding volcano behind Naruto. And Naruto would have this very evilish grin on his face as he just dashed towards Orochimaru with speed that even the two Kokage couldn't even see. He darted right past them. And in a, brief, a swift motion, he sliced straight through Orochimaru. Straight through Orochimaru's upper body. Then turned around, used both of his swords, and cut Orochimaru into so many pieces. And that is where Orochimaru would basically poof into smoke and regurgitate himself. But that even took chakra. And Naruto would be looking right back at Orochimaru with his eyes glowing. And then he would rush at him again, sending slash after slash, even cutting through him just like he did. And then cutting him into small pieces again. And Orochimaru, using that jutsu over and over again, was getting tired. He was getting sweaty. Now he was on the ground, basically breathing very heavily. Naruto is looking at Orochimaru and says... And lift up his sword and say, you die here. The sound four would release a barrier and rush at Naruto. Jugo would be, they would already be in their second state. Jugo would punch Naruto back. And Tayuya would use her flute, instantly putting Naruto in the genjutsu. Naruto would say, what is this? But he managed to, while he was in the genjutsu, he cut Tayuya. He cut Sakan and Ukan. And he cut, uh, what's named Jugo, not Jugo. That one big buff dude with the ugly hair looked like he a clown or something. I'm not saying he Jugo because Jugo is that one dude that that strong ass sage mo curse mark using motherfucker. Yeah him. Sorry, I got stuff cussing. Anyway, 
So as he basically bodies, like he cut all four of the sound members, basically fatal cuts too. So they have to rush to get them out of there. So they basically save Orochimaru and basically leave the Leaf Village. Naruto is released from the Genjutsu, but he sees them leaving. And Naruto has this, he has this urge to just chase them and cut each and every one of them down. But he just breathes out and says, they're not worth it. They're not worth the effort. They are already leaving the village like cowards. This guy has done this twice. And the third Hakage says, twice? You fought him? This is the second time fighting him? Yes, I fought him twice. I fought him in the forest of death when he was trying to put a curse mark on Sasuke's neck. He also tried to do the same thing to Hinata, but I don't think she was really that much of a target for him. Anyway, I kept slashing this guy over and over again, and he kept regurgitating himself, some kind of form of chakra, and I felt that the more he did that, was the more I could slash him. But I did notice one key element of his power, is that the more he used that, the more chakra and energy that he wastes, given the fact that I wasn't afraid to fight him on the third, well, the second round. He didn't really put up that much of a challenge, even if he had the first and second Hokage using their jutsus against me. It wasn't really that much of an effort. Even trees such as the target wasn't able for, really wasn't a challenge for me. I was cutting down trees, cutting through trees, slicing trees into so many bits and pieces when I was just a little boy. Say for example, around the age of six years old. Now that I'm older, going 12, going on 13, I really basically have a good handle around my sword. Now... Naruto would basically be talking to the third Hokage and he would say it's no need to chase him because he's all he's going to do is flee. I knew he he fleed the first time and I was hoping that he wouldn't flee the second time but he did the coward he did the coward's way out. <sighs> anyway, as we continue this, they're conversing about old Naruto basically talks to the third Hokage and says just we need just be doing some reconstruction to the leaf village. And then he basically we cut over to Hinata and Sasuke's battle. Now Hinata would form ten clones and Sasuke would form ten clones, and all of these clones would be charging at Gar, hitting him with rigorous amounts of combos. And these combos would be devastating. One right hook, two right hooks. Hinata would kick Gara in the head and then knee Gara in the chest. And this would be, he would be in his mini Shokaku form. And this is where Gara would be battle damage. Like he's keep reforming everything. So they pushed him from that one form, his like, well, basically incomplete form to his mini Shukaku form. And as he's transforming to that state, Sasuke and Hinata basically say to themselves, they say to each other that we cannot let him transform. Whatever this kid is doing, he's gonna, it's going to be devastating. So Hinata says, I have an idea. I'm basically going to shut off a real last one of his chakra points. And Sasuke, you have to use that jutsu that you learned from Kakashi. And this is where Sasuke would say, right, as the both of them would charge at Gara, And the both of them would be moving in perfect synchronization. The two of their moves would be so fluid. They would be jumping from one style to another style to another style, basically confusing Gara. Gara would be using his sand, sand bullets, everything that he can't even throwing stuff at them. Like sand, like he did in when he fight Naruto, he was throwing like sand bullets at him and dispersed his clones. But Naruto and Hinata, it would be moving in perfect synchronization. Due to the Byakugan and due to Sasuke's dirt, like his evolved form, his starting gun is fully matured. Yes, they would be dummy and Gara to the ground. And once they do their whole barrage attack and Hinata is basically has shut down all Gara's chakra points, it is no contest here. Gara can't use any chakra and this is where Sasuke comes in with the five prom seal. Basically stealing any more of the tail beast chakra that is leaking out of Gara's seal. And putting, well, putting Gara back into his form, his human-like form, as he falls to the ground, battle damaged. Can't move at all. Now, this is where Hinata and Naruto, well, no, Hinata and Sasuke will give their own form of, their former version of the Top No Jutsu. Basically telling Gara, oh, sorry about that. Basically telling Gara that it's more to life than what people have treated you. I know that you have been through pain. I know that you've been through a lot of hurt. But so is that Naruto guy. Gara looks at Sasuke and says, You're talking about the one with the swords. Yes. That whole village hated him. Hated him for what he was or whatever is inside him. From what we've learned, I've learned from Naruto, is that he has a tailed beast inside him. He calls himself a Jinjuriki. That's what those kind of people are called. And it's just not him. 
I also did some studying and digging myself, me and Hinata, on one of our study sessions. And we learned that there are nine tail beasts in the world. Basically, you have the one tails, Naruto has the nine tails, but there is another, well, more out there. There's another seven Biju out there. So, with that being said, I know some of their powers and abilities. I know some of their names, which I'm not going to just... I will say in further parts when we get to Shippuden, we'll we'll come more talk about that. Anyway, so as they get that whole form of talk with Jusu, this is where Tayuya and Kankuro will come out. Ooh, and it's something that I did not mention. I did not mention this at all. But Tayuya would have got bodied by Eno. It wouldn't even been a contest for her. Eno's skills at that point when she had this one month training, she would body Tayuya easily. Now, Kankuro, those kind of puppet things, that wouldn't even be much of a contest for her. I mean, she would easily dispatch his puppets, like easily dispatch his puppets and get to Kankuro very fast. I mean, her speed was not something to be played with. And Naruto made sure of that. She would body Kankuro easily. And, well, Tayuya, she would more have a challenge with because Tayu could use her wind and push her back. And also, her wind sights was cutting, you know, like cutting, you know, on the arm, all over, all over the chest, on the leg. So, yeah, she was having some kind of contest with that. But, Proving to the fact it wasn't that much of a battle for Eno due to like she still could get close to her. Like, so she's saying she's using wind, so she still could get to her if you know what I mean. But something I do have to mention is how she got to her. Okay, for you Baki readers, you remember how Baki was in the comics, right? Well, manga, right? And he did this cockroach dash. Basically moving at a high speed. That's how she did it. So she got into this stance. This this kind of stance right here. And she says, if I can't, if you keep blowing me back, you're trying to keep me at a distance, right? Well, not even you could manipulate, well, have some kind of counterattack against this speed. I will be at you in an instant. And when I do, it's game over. So she would rush at Eno fast as hell. And the ground would shatter beneath Eno's feet. Well... She would rush at Tam- t- like Tamari fast as hell. And the ground would shatter beneath Eno's feet. Sorry about that little blotch there. But it was shot against Eno's feet. And as she's rushing at her, she throws a heavy punch that hits t- Tamari in the gut. T- but Tamari would cough up blood and spit. And this is where Eno would slam her elbow directly into Tamari's head. Sending her to the ground knocked out. And this is where Eno would be breathing heavily. As blood is dripping from her arms, her leg, and her nose. And she would say, You were a difficult opponent to beat. Countering the gust of wind that came from this big ass fan of yours was quite annoying. Anyway, so small tangent aside, I just had to relate that because I kind of blotched that. I didn't mention that in much of the fight and everything. But anyway, so as we continue on, we passed the whole talk no jutsu with Gara, the whole... So the Leaf Village is getting in co with each other. So everything's playing out for normal. Now this is where Jiraiya would come knock on Naruto's door. And the Naruto would go get Eno. The both of them, because Jiraiya is very fun of Eno and Naruto. He likes the both of them. Now, he takes Eno and Naruto to the Hokage's office. And the Hokage just sits at his desk and he blows out smoke. And he's where he tells Jiraiya that he's retiring. He's getting old. And someone... New should take over. Someone that has the youth for this kind of job. He's an old man. He would just like a break. He would like to see the world and relax for once. He's been at a desk for basically a lot, a long time. So it would be just good to just finally relax. Let someone else take over the being Hokage. And this is what Jiraiya has the perfect idea. Because he's not doing it. He wants to stick to his spy work. That more to him. Being behind a desk won't allow him to do that. But he does have a perfect candidate for it. And he suggests Lady Tsunade. Now, this is where Jiraiya would, well, the third Hokage would get a good idea from that. Jiraiya is onto something. Lady Tsunade would be a perfect candidate for Hokage. So, this is where Jiraiya and, well, Naruto and he and Ino would go to find Lady Tsunade. Sasuke and Hinata would go train with Kakashi some more since he sees promise in Hinata. And he wants to help her out with her jutsu that she's trying to develop into a completed form. Yeah, so he's going to spend some more time training them. Now, on the part where they go to the village and they meet up, they instantly get to this bar. Well, not instantly because they had to take a few breaks and everything. But I'm not going to say instantly. They instantly get to this like hotel. 
And as they're sitting in the hotel, Naruto's doing a few push-ups as he's talking with Eno. Now, this is where Eno would say to Naruto, once we get to, once we get to a point, there is someone that I eventually want to fight. And she, Naruto looks at Eno and says, who? And she says, there's a Jinjuriki called the Two Tails. And Naruto basically sits in a crisscross formation looking at Eno. And he says, uh, so you want to fight a tailed beast, right? And Naruto basically looks at Eno with a hand on his chin. That wouldn't be far off. Why not fight the strongest one of all? And this is where Eno would say, I have to work my way up to the top. Basically, I want to go one by one. I want to fight the one tails all the way up into the nine tails. And I want to see just, I want to test my strength. I want to see if I can beat each and every one of you. You, one of all, might be the hardest challenge I ever face. And Naruto says, you want to challenge your boyfriend to a battle? And Eno smiles at this and says, this is my way of becoming stronger, overcoming obstacles. I'm going to challenge every last person in this world, and I will become a strong Konoichi. I will prove that Konoichi are not weak, like my canon counterpart. Anyway, small funny thing aside, anyway. So as they get, they are at the hotel talking, they hear a knock on the door. Naruto instantly senses bloodlust behind the door, but he senses something familiar. A familiar type of chakra. It's like, oh, so Sasuke is outside. Naruto would go to open the door, only to be greeted by Itachi and Kisame. Now this is where Naruto, Itachi would say, Naruto, you are to come with us immediately. Naruto would be smiling right now. And this is where Eno would even smile too. As the both of their eyes glowed. Naruto would even be paying attention to anything Kisame said to him. I mean not Kisame, Itachi said to him. He would look directly towards Kisame. He would look at him with so much like lust in his eyes. Like he's saying, you're a Kisame Hoshigaki, aren't you? You're the ninja that uses that shark, shark skin sword. Kisame would say, so you recognize me as a fast sword slash would be across Kisame's chest. Kisame would jump back from Naruto as Eno would come into a punch and punch Kaka like Itachi directly through the building. And she would say, you're not getting the way of them. Itachi, blah, 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 blah. now I'm stuttering because I'm excited about this because I've been waiting to tell this part of the story. So Naruto sends a slash through Kisame's chest. Kisame jumps back and getting his sword ready. Like saying that, damn, that was fast. This kid's got some spunk. He even smiles at this. And Eno would jump off the bed, basically jumping, like creaking the bed to the ground. Like, you know, uh, basically, how do I describe this? So as she jumped from the bed, the ground in the hotel would shatter as she leaped from the bed to use all her power. And she punched Itachi so hard, sending him through the building. Now, this is where Itachi and Eno would get into a battle. And she, all Eno is doing is stalling. She knows she can't beat this guy. But just like she said in her last speech to Naruto, that it's obstacles that she needs to overcome. And from training with Naruto and learning about a lot of things, she knows not to look any Uchiha in the eyes. She's keeping an eye on Itachi's feet. But from what we know, Itachi can just put you in a genjutsu by pointing at you. But so that's what Eno's to Eno's advantage. She's barraging Itachi with a bunch of attacks, not giving him room to use any kind of genjutsu or even anything. Itachi's on a defensive right now, trying to evade and counterattack against Eno the best way he can. She's not getting punches in because Itachi's watching her movements and seeing her attacks come before they actually happen. So that's the edge that he's got. So Itachi's on the defensive, but then Eno starts to think. She punches the ground and starts to shatter the ground, creating a huge vibration through the ground, alerting Jiraiya. Jiraiya senses a commotion right there, and then he instantly starts to get up and run over the, to where Naruto and Eno at. Naruto is at fighting with Kisame Hoshigaki, and the, both of them are going at it. Their swords are clinging together with each, or, each other over and over and over and over again. As the hotel to the building, Naruto didn't want any casualties to happen, so he kicked, he slashed at Kisame and then thrust at him by basically using his shoulder and Shoulder check Eno, well, Kisame, out of the building. 
onto the street. Now, this is where the real fight begins. The both of them are engaging into a heavy sword fight. And Kisame is getting slashed and Naruto is getting slashed. The both of them are going at it. And Naruto is seeing just how strong this guy really is. The both of them are swinging their swords very fluidly at each other. But Naruto is cutting shark skin while cutting the sword shark skin. Yes, he's cutting into that. So Naruto even gets even more excited. Not only can I cut you, but I can cut that thing too. That you have a sword that's a living creature. Naruto basically pulls out two swords and the both of his swords glow purple. They have this purplish aura around them. And Naruto rushes at Kisame, slashing each and every time. Kisame is blocking and taking chakra from Naruto, but it's not stopping him. Naruto is a force to be reckoned with. Naruto slashes Kisame right through the chest like a deep slash that spews out blood. And then he slashes Kisame on the leg. And then he slashes Kisame across the back. And then he slashes Kisame on the neck. Kisame is covered in wounds that are spewing out blood. And he jumps back from Naruto. Kisame Kisame is thinking about fusing with Samehara. Kisame looks at Naruto and he's getting angry. He's holding his neck as he's like basically has mouth full of blood. And this is where Kisame is vid- like tra- like finna get ready to transform into his like shark form. And took Atachi came in and grabbed Kisame and the both of them blitzed out of there. They didn't expect that kind of encounter. Atachi nevertheless expected Naruto to be that strong or the girl that he was with. Atachi had to use the smoke screen from that attack to basically maneuver himself around Eno because he knew he was not going to get past her. This girl was something, something strange. She was so strong. That strength, he's only seen some, like, he hasn't seen very many people utilize their strength in such a way. So Itachi gets Kisame and the both of them get out of dodge immediately. Now this is where Naruto basically throws his sword directly at Kisame, stabbing it directly through his heart. Now this is where Kisame would basically cough and gag up blood. But Itachi still has a hold over him and he's grabbing Kisame and both of them directly get the way they leave. Now Itachi looks at Naruto and he uses his Atamaterasu to keep Naruto at bay. Naruto doesn't touch those flames because he thinks they are very, very dangerous. But he even looks at Kisame and smiles. Bye bye my prey. I will be back for you soon. And do me a favor. Don't die. Because I at least want to kill you again. I know you're not going to die from this. You can keep that sword because it's not a perfect weapon. Now this is where Naruto would basically just turn around. Now Jiraiya would use his toe mouth to basically put out the sword, the, well, the Matarasu flames, I guess. Did he just use that to burn? Itachi used that to burn through it, but I, it wasn't. The flames weren't still burning. So we're going to use that head cannon and anything. So everything. Anyway, that place... Everything would basically calm down and Naruto would just basically be in his crisscross formation and say, "Ah, I should have found somewhere more safer than this. I didn't know they were going to cause this much collateral damage. I'm going to have to help these people rebuild this place because I'm not just going to leave this place like this. It kind of was my fault that they even came looking for me in the first place. I guess it's for you, Ninetales. As the Ninetales would conversate back with Naruto, what do the Akatsuki want with me? Oh, Well, if that's the case, if the Akatsuki is trying, is doing what I think they're doing, they might be trying to revive the Ten Tails. Naruto says, what's a Ten Tails? You telling me there's another Jinjuriki out here that has Ten Tails? So it all, it goes up to Ten now? Naruto, and Nine Tails will basically just rub his head and say, no, Naruto, that's not it. The Ten Tails is a being that was first created. It was the first tailed beast. Anyway... Let's not talk about this now. That's a story for another time. A very long story for another time. Don't you have a Hokage you should be getting? Naruto would say, oh, yeah, you're right. Well, we'll get back to this conversation very later. So they would continue to go get Tsunade. Tsunade would be bashing the Hokages and doing what she did just like she did in canon. Only to be have Nar- not Naruto, but Eno tra- challenge her. Naruto was getting ready to cut her. But Eno stopped him, and she looked at Naruto with a very scared look. And this is where Lady Tsunade and Shizune, Shizune, was looking at Tsunade with a very... (laughs) they They were looking at each other with sweat pouring down, like sweat coming down their head. And they would say, this kid just cut the both of us in so many ways that we didn't think was possible. 
And this is where Naruto would be smiling and say, hmm. All right, so you're going to challenge her? Well, this should be fun. So Eno would challenge Tsunade, and Tsunade would say, if you can land one punch on me, then I'll come back to the village gladly and become Hokage. And Eno say, just one punch? Are you serious? And this is where Eno would be looking at Naruto, and then she Naruto would just smile. Eno would get into a stance. And uh, Eno would get into a stance and say, remember, you're the one who said one punch. I was just going to have a very entertaining battle on you. But if you're going to bet on those odds, then I would highly take this challenge. So Eno would get into a stance and in a flash of speed, she would punch Lady Tsunade directly into the stomach. Hard. Sending so much pain throughout Lady Tsunade's body as she went flying through buildings. Now, Eno didn't mean to use that much power. She literally wanted to see what Lady Tsunade was capable of. But in the heat of the moment, she did say just one punch. So she didn't know that Eno had this fast-ass cockroach dash that would send her at a maximum speed and directly punch her directly in the stomach. Now, Eno, Tsunade would get back up from this. Like, it didn't hurt her as much. She would get back up for this. But that just shocked Lady Tsunade. This, this girl is doing the same technique that I've been doing. And how did she manage to get that kind of control and use her chakra in that way? And this is where Naruto would be looking at her and she said, I bet it has something to do with that kid over there. I still don't even know what he's capable of. But a deal is a deal. So Lady Tsunade would get up. She would brush herself off and say, you guys have a Hokage. We leave tomorrow and return to the village. And that's where I'm ending this part at. Thank you guys for supporting the series so much. I love all of you. And let me know. You know what? Since this shit was so good, if you guys can get this bitch to 100 likes. Damn, 95 likes. If you can get this bitch to 100 likes, that let me know you really want Shippuden. You really want the Shippuden verse to this story. Anyway, without any further ado, you guys have a good day, a good night, and plus ultra. Good night. I'm not